everyone. Happy Sunday. You're listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, and this is Weekend Wake Up. My name is Caitlin Aristizabal, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Leslie Gallagher. Today is November 1st, which I think marks the official end to spooky season. Do you agree, Le- Leslie? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like November 1st, automatically all the spooky vibes are just gone. <laughs> yeah, do you think that it's like you're like you're ready for Thanksgiving at this point or it's still early for that? I love Thanksgiving, so maybe I'm a little biased. I'm like the minute November 1st strikes, I'm like let's go with Thanksgiving. Like I'm like ready. Like Really? Yes, That's my mom. That's my mom's favorite holiday. She yeah. loves Thanksgiving. <laughs> I would say it's my favorite cuz it's just the most wholesome to me. Really? But like, yeah, yeah, cuz it's just like you make food, you gather around, you say what you're grateful for and then like I don't know, it's just and it's just that really is sweet. true. It's a very wholesome holiday. Yeah. I feel like, like I like Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, it does. I like Christmas, but not for like the gift portion. I like it because I just feel like everybody's happier. And it's just such a time of like, like there's so many lights and everything's decorated. But, you know, we're not there yet. <laughs> we're not there just yet. But, yeah. <laughs> but we have, um, yeah, well, that was, that was a good spooky season. You know, I'll Halloween tops it off, which is the best thing. Of course. Um, we have we a hope bunch you all of- had a safe Halloween because yeah. I know, you know, COVID and also just like holidays like this can be, you know, unsafe for reasons not even regarding COVID. So we hope you guys stayed safe and we're glad you're joining us today. It definitely was a very different Halloween this year, but you know, we got through it. <laughs> uh, we have a bunch of cool topics planned for today, but before we get into that, let's talk about what happened on this day in history. Alrighty, so for this day in history in 1512, Michelangelo's paintings on ceiling of Sistine Chapel in the Vatican first exhibited. It's exciting. In 1969, the Beatles' Abbey Road album goes number one in the U.S. and stays number one for 11 weeks. In 1997, Titanic, directed by James Cameron, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, premieres at the Tokyo International Film Festival Academy Awards Best Picture in 1998. So that is some pretty exciting news. A lot of entertainment and art stuff today. That's what I was going to say. You know what I think is always so funny? Every time we do this day in history, there's always at least one like movie premiered on this day. And I love that. I mean, I look for the more uh, entertainment-y lifestyle ones because honestly, when I go to look at them up, it's like this war happened and this terrible thing happened. So I try to find ones that are like, oh, like Titanic premiered. Like that's... uh, yeah. That's more That's cute. uplifting, more our speed, I think. It definitely is. And on that same note, we have Kathy here to talk to us about lifestyle. Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Hi. Hi. All right, so I'll just get right into it. So I'm going, I'm going to be starting off with, um, oh my gosh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to be starting off with travel news to be um, more specific. Um, American Airlines policy effectively bans power wheelchair users from flying to 130 U.S. airports. This policy became effective this past June, which which is discriminatory against wheelchair users. Passenger John Morris has flown multiple multiple times with the company American Airlines. He has flown 21 times to be exact with American Airlines, and there has never been an issue until his most recent visit to the current airport in, in October 2020. He has flown with his power wheelchair 30 times with other airlines. The supervisor (laughs) told Morris that American Airlines had instituted a new policy and that his wheelchair was now too heavy to fly or or to fly on any of its regional aircraft. The airline refused to transport Morris in Dallas on on his final destination of Roswell, New Mexico. When John Morris accessed the new policy, the supervisor gave a list of the following maximum acceptable weights for mobility aids by aircraft type. Maximum amount of weight they can be based on the aircraft ranges between 300 and 400 pounds. Morris's wheelchair was 450 pounds. When asked why American Airlines made this change, it said it was because the airline was damaging too many wheelchairs dur- during loading. Essentially, by then refusing to transport power wheelchairs on regional jets, mobility devices would be safe from, da- from damage. They claim it is meant to protect wheelchair users. Morris said, quote, I contend that American Airlines committed a gross violation of the air 
of the Air Carrier Access Act. It is my hope that the Department of Transportation will come to the defense of disabled travelers, civil rights, and Levi enforcement action. It must be done, end quote. His wheelchair is only 50 pounds over the limit, over the 450 pound limit. Yeah, it's very, it's a Which crazy situation. Think. Because, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like when you hear 50 pounds, it doesn't sound like a lot over and mm -hmm. but just the whole idea in itself is just wild to me like i just don't, when i read this the first thing i thought was why like why did all of a sudden why are they doing this yeah and their their reasoning seems very like making excuses like they it sounds like they just like they're saying it's to like keep them safe but like he's flown over 20 times and and 50 times including Air, american airlines with no problem with his power wheelchair so i i don't really think their reasoning i feel like there's more to their story like they just don't want to deal with it or like for some reason but they are literally being ableist and discriminatory and it's just wrong it shouldn't be a privilege to fly like any other american it shouldn't be like you know it's 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 a right like if they can do it if like able-bodied people can do it he should be able to do it this stuff makes me really frustrated and angry, but I'm glad we're talking about it. <laughs> How do you guys feel about it? Uh, I also I'll go. Yes, I definitely do agree with that. Um, yeah, I think it is just very upsetting to hear about, and it's something that we don't necessarily hear about. Or um, in my case, it wasn't something that I would. In my case, it wasn't something that I would look into, but but this article was brought to my attention, and everything, and it was very interesting. I think that it is very important to talk about these these issues and everything because it does happen. And again, this um, yeah. Um, and again, this um, yeah. And again, this ban became effective in June, and that was really recent. That was less than three months ago. And because of that, obviously, a lot of people have not been traveling during that time. So it so it so it is so it is, it is a ban that that might have not been as known. And I think that again, um, John Moore should be able to travel. And again, he has traveled with, with American Airlines how many times, and now this has to be an issue exactly for why, like what's reasoning. So it is very interesting. And I hope yeah, that he's able feels, to like, on his feels, next flight. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like, it's weird. Cause like he's traveled like over 20 times with American Airlines, no problem. And then this is like all of a sudden, but anyways, do you have anything else to talk about today, Kathy? Yes, I do. So from travel news to music news, as mentioned last week, Ariana Grande's album Positions just dropped on October 30th to be exact. It was released at midnight and fans are already loving it. Some, some of her fans um, do think that this is definitely a different and newer sound, so they're not very keen to it, but I for one am personally a fan of it. The album features 14 songs. I know that Caitlin is a fan. Did you get to hear the album yet by any chance? And what are your thoughts on it if you did? Okay, sorry. I just like randomly moved my background for five seconds and I'm going to go back in a minute. But just because there was like awkward noise coming from next door in my like my neighbors and I don't know why. So anyway, um, I'm very excited about Position. So I already listened to like the day it came out. I listened to it all day doing my homework like all day. And my roommate was playing it too. So definitely I... See, here's the thing. I like it, and I did, when I first listened to it, I was like, there's not really a song that I don't like on this album, and I was like, that's, that's pretty good, um, and then I kept seeing, like, more articles about it, and my friend is on what she called Slander Ariana TikTok, um, and a lot of people are hating on it, which I didn't realize until later on, and I don't even know what to really say about that, because I... Uh, it's kind of the thing I love Ariana Grande but she does definitely does not really go out of her comfort zone very often she stays very yeah. like like you hear her music and you know it's her she has a formula that she follows through and through it's why she's successful but you know I mean she's been um, in the business for a little while now so it's kind of be interesting to see her break out a little but personally my favorite song is Off the Table featuring The Weeknd because I think The Weeknd and Ariana's voice just flows so nicely together I love it Yes, that definitely has to be probably one of my favorite songs on the album. And again, it is very interesting. I, I remember, yeah, I, <laughs> I remember when she went, when she was back on Victorious, like back a while ago and everything. And, um, and during that time when she was releasing music and everything, I wasn't really into it. It wasn't really my sound, but now with her new music now, it definitely is. 
And I'm just excited to see whatever she comes up with next. Obviously, this is her sixth album, and I believe that there will be many more to come after this one. So I'm excited to um, hear about that. But yeah, I definitely do support this album and everything. So speaking of music, Harry Styles' music video for one of his songs, Golden, was, was recently just released a few days ago. I personally love the video, and it's definitely a song that I can dance in my kitchen to. I love those type of songs where you just like blast it and you're just dancing all around. Have any have have either of you seen the music video um, for Harry Styles' song "Golden"? <laughs> you know, I watched it. I watched it. Um, I love Harry Styles. He's such an icon. He's a style icon. He's just he's a human rights activist. I love that man. But anyway. Um, I liked the golden music video because it just felt kind of like freeing like he's very like he's driving yeah. around and then he's like swimming I don't know just I don't know how to explain it but he's just so like watching his stuff makes me happy and it's just so wholesome beautiful beautiful man <laughs> I watched a clip from it and it it had like that freeing vibe like it was very yeah. I don't know like the aesthetic aesthetic of what I saw was like really nice and now I want to watch the whole thing and listen to the whole song yeah I've heard a lot of good <laughs> things like what Caitlin said so should be pretty awesome. Yeah, I can agree. I didn't get to watch it right as it did premiere, but I watched a little bit after. And again, I can agree with you, but with both of you, I love it. I think it's very freeing. I just, like, I guess in the sense like vibe to it. I'm using the word vibe, but yeah, and yeah, I do love it. I think it it definitely to me it just screams summer. And right now we are in fall, so hopefully, oh, hopefully when summer comes around, I'll be able to blast that blast that song as freely as I can. So. Yes, There's nothing it, wrong it, with good vibes, you know? Yeah. It, it's definitely the summer anthem we all deserved, even though the summer was a little interesting. But thank <laughs> you for all those updates, Kathy. I love talking to you about lifestyle. Oh, yes, thank goodness. you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me. Wow. I, I really liked how Kathy opened up our eyes today with talking about um, that travel news. Because um, I came across that story and I was just like, we have to talk about this. So I'm, I'm glad she brought it to light. And I think it's important to talk about those things, especially, you know, since I don't know, like I am like an able-bodied person. I feel like it's more important to spread awareness and show how foreign those things are. Um, but yeah, and then she also had some really awesome music updates. I always love music updates. They always make you so happy, you know? Now here's Kenny with some entertainment updates. Kenny, yay. Hello. How are you two? Good, good. All right, excited so to hear Netflix. what you have. Netflix is making a change. They are upping the subscription costs for the second time in two years. The standard plan is being increased to fourteen dollars a month, and the premium will be eighteen dollars a month, while the basic plan will stay at nine. The prices are going to be changed in future bills for current users, but new users are going to have to start paying this price right now. The price is only happening in the United States, and the cost has been changed to accommodate for Netflix's increased programming budget. The budget has been raised every single year since 2013, and last year was estimated to be over $18 billion. I'm wondering how you two feel about this. You know, I'll admit that Netflix truly does have some amazing programming, and I'm really excited for a lot of their shows, like the next seasons come out. But this is, this again, to be a lot. Like, I didn't get HBO Max, so like, that was 15, but this is kind of competing that. It's only a dollar, but like, I'm a broke college student. I got no money. I'm a broke college student. And it just doesn't bode well for the future for me. And, you know, what do you two feel about this? You know, uh, my family kind of, like, just pays for it. And we, like, all use the same account. So I'm not, like, paying for it myself, per se. But if it keeps going up, I can definitely see my family, like, backing out and being like, oh, well, we're not going to use Netflix anymore. And then I'll probably be really sad because there's actually a lot of Netflix originals that I like because they have been, they've been kicking out some really good original content, and I really like the shows that they have. Along, a, along with that, there's other shows on there that, um, that I don't see on other platforms. I mean, some of them overlap, but I always like Netflix. It has a special place in my heart. <laughs> Something about Netflix. See, I have a love-hate relationship with Netflix. I really do, because they make me mad a lot. Uh, they, they're constantly taking things off, and it's always things that I never finish, so that makes me mad. But just this, Netflix is the one thing I don't pay for because I pay for my own Spotify, Hulu, I don't know what else to have, Disney Plus, like all that. But Netflix is the one thing I don't pay for. And I know for a fact if my mom didn't pay for it, I wouldn't buy it because it's over $10. So I cannot believe, I remember when they raised the prices the first time because this is like the second time they've done this. And my mom was mad, but she's still paying it. But now they're doing it again. So I don't know how she's going to react 
or if she's going to keep paying for it. But what is premium Netflix? It said premium sports. I, I looked I, it up I, because I was curious. Um, it basically you can stream in like ultra HD and also you can watch at four screens at once if you want. Oh, to. yeah. I the reason I have, have the, that. I have the standard because I gave my password to my sister and she's like, she's watching it one day. I, I try to get in. I'm like, why can't I watch? Basic, you can only do one. Standard, you can only do two. So I was like, I guess I got to up the plan now. Oh, that makes sense. Because I think my mom upped it because we have my grandmother on too. And then she'd get mad because I couldn't watch and she couldn't watch. And my grandmother couldn't watch all at the same time. And oh, okay. That makes sense. $14. $14. I think that's crazy. Is that a year? Does anyone? You're math. You used to be a math major. What's that? A year? 14, uh, 12 times. That's 168. He did that so fast. Oh my God. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't. I can't do that. that. That's how my brain no. works. One hundred sixty-eight dollars. We we can I? This is. Can you answer it like in words? Like, what do you? What step do you do first to do twelve? To okay, so that's twelve times fourteen. So really, it's just twelve times twelve plus two times twelve. Whoa. Twelve times twelve. One forty-four plus twenty-four. Twelve squared is one hundred and forty-four. Two times twelve is twenty-four. One hundred and forty-four mm-hmm. plus twenty-four is one hundred sixty-eight. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just the, anyway, the I just thought that I just wanted to see how like your brain worked in like words. It's always it's like those those Twitter problems that are always trending that everybody always gets different answers and everybody's oh, like, how do you do it? How do you do it? I hate those. Yeah. Things. I know. <laughs> no, I understood what you said. I feel confused because I'm just like a pen and paper person. Yeah. Yeah. But you back to the topic, it's just it's crazy to me because, like. You said before there's some shows on there that are really good but like when does it get to the point where it's like it's just too much and they even said in the article that they know they're gonna lose some people but at this point in time it's worth it i wonder when that's funny because if you're losing customers and losing you know loyalty and, and trust with customers isn't that like very bad for your brand like that's confusing to me you don't want to turn people away you want to keep people on board and I understand that increasing prices will increase their profit and it's probably a smart business move but it's not a smart like customer service move especially if they know they might lose customers I mean like it's like even if they kept like maybe like their richer customers like is that enough to keep them sustained if the prices are raised like I don't, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Maybe because I don't know a lot about business, but I know more about customer service and turning people away, like, and like being okay with that, like that's not going to work out. Yeah. And also just one more thing I wanted to say before we uh, move on was just that, uh, Kenny said it before too, like I don't pay for HBO either because HBO Max, because it's so expensive, even though I want to, like I I did a free trial just because I wanted to watch Euphoria. And now there's new episodes and I don't know how I'm going to watch it because I don't want to pay $15. So maybe Netflix is just trying to become more of a premium thing because I feel like HBO is not accessible in any way, but somehow everybody knows about it, but it's really not accessible. So maybe it's they're trying to be more elite. More than Netflix now. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what Netflix's goal is if they're trying to be more like... In other news, the King of Pop's daughter releases her solo debut album the daughter of Michael Jackson, Paris Jackson, releases an album about recent heartbreak. And a stark difference to her father, though, the album is acoustic-based, and it's also in the alternative folk genre. Many of the songs detail someone going through the stages of grief from being heartbroken. And Paris has a history of se- severe depression and says that she's really happy that she's releasing the album. Now, it's obvious that artists often poured their struggles into their music, but I wonder what is going on in your heads about this. Personally, I find the best music to be the songs that are raw and completely vulnerable because it really gives you a window to the artist and it lets you relate to them. What do you think about this? That's definitely my favorite kind of music. I love music that really kind of goes into the emotional side of situations and just, I don't know, makes you feel things. So I'm excited. I mean, I I don't really know much about her music, but I'm excited to hear it because, you know, why not? Same here. I feel the same way about that. Yeah, exactly. It's always like when... It's emotional. That's when people are at their core. You can really relate. That's just a quick topic. You know, most people like the emotional songs, so it didn't have to get too deep. But now, I'm getting to my second movie review. This week, I am reviewing. Give me a second. It's going to take me a while. So I have to take a breath. 
Borat, subsequent, subsequent movie film, delivery of prodigious bribe to American regime for make benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. That was a mouthful. Anyway, Borat Sagdiyev is back, and this time he's going through America with his daughter, who is now, who is named Tutar. If you've seen the first movie, you will not be disappointed because it's just as satirical, funny, and controversial as before. If you have not seen the first, here's a quick summary of the basic idea of both movies. The mockumentary-style movie follows fictional Kazakh jour journalist Bar Borat Sagdiyev adventuring through America with exaggerated cultural differences that take advantage of the natural just politeness of people. For example, Borat repeatedly says things that would be considered just offensive, but because he is thought to be from an extremely different culture, he just keeps on crossing the line, and he does so without any consequences. And that's something that Borat, too, excels at. You know, just like it did with the first. Sasha Baron Cohen, he's the creator of Borat, you know, mastermind mind behind the whole, whole thing. He's the actor. He keeps on trying to outwit people, you know, showing their true colors. But when they're faced with someone so drastically different, they let their guard down. And his newly introduced daughter, Tutar, who's played by, by Maria Bakalova, who, as a side note, great, she performed very well in the movie. She helps him go even further and push him down for it. And throughout the movie, people are just absolutely shocked by what these two do because they just think that's their every single day. That's, that's what their normal is. And like I said before, that one, they let their guard down. And really when they do that, it gives an insight to what the American people do. Like what is the true motivation by the American people? And many times people are dis disappointing with how they react. But others like the adored babysitter, Janice Jones pr proves that the heart of gold the biggest surprise about the sequel to me is that it's, it's an actual film. The first one was just like a mock-up of funniest situations. There was no plot development or anything. You know, it was entertaining, but there's no messages. The sequel, though, it has a story. It tells someone, it tells a story of breaking a past of what's expected of you. You know, in accordance with fictional Kazakh culture, I have to say fictional, Tutar is supposed to be given off to a man to never see her father or family again. The film follows how she's able to get past that and what her expectations of women and from people from her culture, what they're supposed to do. She wants to have things for, for herself. And believe it or not, change, that's something even happens to Borat. And if you've seen the first movie, you would be shocked that Borat can change, even in the slightest. But he comes to learn that things can be different, even treating his daughter as an equal by the end, as she should be. Now, while it's sad to note that she has to go through this big journey to become an equal, it's something that to me is reflective of the current world. Right now, you know, there are a lot of unrest and problems around the world, especially in America. Like I said before, it exposes the true thoughts of many Americans in the film. You know, those seemingly impossible, Borat changed. To me, Borat is a symbol of something that just is held up with strong walls. It will never change. But by the end, Borat changed. I am stressing that because you don't understand how possible that is. Borat changed and became something we never thought was possible, an accepting person. Of course, he still has his base values. He's still offensive many times, but he's changed for the much for the better. And I think that it offers a glimmer of hope for Americans, you know, that we can get out of this era of, you know, a lot of unrest and issues and become to more positive light. You know, I think that's what Sasha Baron Cohen set out to show the world. If Borat can change, then we can too. We can become even better. I give Borat subsequent, subsequent movie film. I couldn't say the name. A 7 out of 10. And if you are interested, it's available on Amazon Prime as an original movie. I have one question. Go ahead. Just based on your description, it seems like this movie, like the sequel, actually sounds better than the first because it has like an actual message and the characters change. Would you say the sequel is better than the first one? I would not. No, it's oh. just so funny that I can't. Oh boy, I can't. This that is, one that's just very, very interesting. I had to fit this in two minutes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, that's awesome. I, Kenny, I always look forward to your movie reviews because it gives me something to watch over the weekend. So thank you for that. And it's on Amazon Prime, so now I'm really excited to go watch that because I didn't realize it was like, like I don't know, I could watch it so easily. <laughs> yeah, they made the movie. Oh. Okay. okay. Original. Ooh. Yeah. Go Amazon. <laughs> good job, Amazon. Thanks, yeah. Good, good job, Kenny. Thank you for your movie room. And yeah, now we have something to watch this weekend.
Yes. Leslie, I feel like we could watch this when we do our little virtual baking day, whenever that happens. We should do I'm that. actually planning on baking today. You're going to bake today? Yes, What's happening? I can't bake tomorrow, tomorrow because um, I'm busy with going to work. So I'm baking today if you like to <gasps> bake. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, we're going to talk about this after the show. We'll talk about <laughs> it later. But, anyways, <laughs> here's Lauren with some self-care segment self-care sunday goodness what you got for us lauren hey so today on sunday self-care our topic is seasonal depression also known as seasonal affective disorder also known ironically as sad Uh, i I mean it works it works have you guys ever heard or experienced seasonal depression yes um, I know I have I know a handful of people who experience it. Um, so yeah, I would say I have I have some experience with it, just like witnessing it firsthand how it affects people and their moods. I don't think I te- really experience seasonal depression because I don't know. I actually I fun fact I don't I hate summer for for a lot of reasons. So I'm actually more like moody in summer, but I know that's not quite the same thing not to undermine no, that makes sense oh, because there's there's seasonal disorder where it likes it flip-flops and people get it in the summer and then not in the winter so it doesn't yeah, make sense I think if anything I experience it more in the summer because to me the summer is like I I hate hot weather <laughs> and I think weather is like a big thing with like seasonal depression and I'm just really I'm more stressed out in the summer for a couple of reasons but yeah so I guess I, I do have some experience with it, just not the typical winter seasonal depression. That's the interesting. Stat. I don't think I've, I, I um, don't like cold weather, but I, I wouldn't say I'd experience seasonal depression, but I do, I have friends who have experienced it. Like one of my closest friends, like I think it affects her a lot. Every time the seasons change, like you can visibly tell and So that's something that she goes through, but personally, I don't have any experience with it, but tell us more about it. Okay, so this type of depression begins and ends at the same time of the year annually, and it affects four four to six of the percent of the population severely, and about 15% mildly. It's typically caused by the lack of sunlight in the winter because of vitamin D is essential for your happiness, and it directly affects your serotonin. But sometimes, like we said before, people can have the opposite with the the depression lasting during the warm seasons and ending in the cold seasons. See, I wonder how that works, though, because in the summer, you have the opportunity to get plenty of vitamin D. But like, I I definitely know exactly how that feels like. I am, I'm just more, I don't know, like, I'm just not with it in the summer. Like, if you know me really well and you knew me all year round, you'd be like, oh, yeah, she does not. She's not a summer person. I don't. I don't even understand how that works, though. Because if if winter is because of, like the lack of vitamin D, then then why do why do people like me like have it in summer? Do you have an answer for that? Or it's is probably it like- because it's like overwhelming, and like all the time that you have off. I've some of the symptoms of summer seasonal disorder are like insomnia, poor appetite, and like increased agitation or anxiety, mm-hmm. which I think you might have been like saying before like I think I also get like irritable during the summer it's for me it's like I just yeah I have more anxiety in the summer because it's normally a different routine than during like the school year and that break in routine drives me insane it gives me anxiety if I don't have things to do and if I don't plan my day every single day I get really anxious and that's it's just like I'm just I'm not having it in the summer. That makes <laughs> That's sense. probably why, because it's a lack of structure and routine. Yeah, you have more time to like think about stuff. The mm-hmm. statistics that you said before, Lauren, though, was really interesting to me because um, I you said 15% experience it mildly. I don't know what I thought it would be, but that's just a really small number. Like I thought, I thought it would be more because I feel like that's a topic that's really discussed. I don't know. I just feel like I've heard it a lot in my lifetime, so it's kind of interesting that it doesn't affect that many people. Yeah, yeah I thought it would be like. 50%. Like maybe yeah. that's not a lot, but I thought really? a lot more people went through that. Yeah, I didn't know it was rare. Or maybe that many people are diagnosed. Like maybe a lot of people like feel that kind of like dread during that time, but like maybe that percent of people are like 
like diagnosed with it because I know people who like feel really down but they don't necessarily have like a diagnosis of like oh you have SAD or SAD if that makes sense so maybe that's why the numbers are like that just a guess what I'm wondering is because I tend to like I I wouldn't say that like I actually have seasonal affective disorder but like I do get down in the winter like winter blues or whatever what I'm wondering is that this is my first year of college so I'm gonna have that big break that I never had before and I feel like a big part in high school of like the winter blues was that you had so much work too, like piled on you those seasons and then the cold weather and then getting up in the dark so I wonder if it's going to change for me this year and I guess we'll see if you I, are I if, you go <laughs> <laughs> um no I was just gonna say if you are like not somebody like Leslie who likes to have like her day planned every day you're really gonna chill in the winter 100% because you're just gonna be like nothing to do unless you make something for yourself to do the thing with college is like it is so nice to like have that month-long break where you don't do work because like I feel like the first I mean like you're in your first semester so you're like obviously adjusting to college and you've like a lot on your plate and especially like the very last few weeks preparing for finals are very stressful so to have that like month-long break if you're not doing any like winter session classes it's really nice and like definitely better than high school because I remember on winter break we would have like three projects you'd have a week to do them and it was just like you didn't even really get to enjoy the holidays as much but like with college you actually get time off and can enjoy life yes like I think it'll be better for you this year honestly I have I'm excited I'm excited have you guys I saw it I originally saw this on TikTok but have you guys ever heard of the sad lamp no I'm on TikTok but I've not heard of that yeah same it's like it's like um a lamp it's like a bigger lamp like a light box it's called and it replicates natural sunlight and it's said to reduce symptoms of seasonal depression because it mimics like the vitamin D and like getting up in the morning. And it's, it's, so it's more helpful to use it in the morning to mimic the sunrise, but it's not supposed to be used for more than 60 minutes. That is Whoa. so cool. How expensive is that? I know. I think there's like, <laughs> I think there's like more expensive ones and then there's like cheaper options. Like, that's a great holiday gift idea. You're like, oh my gosh. Hey, here, happy, Merry Christmas. Here's a seasonal, um, <laughs> that to help you combat your seasonal depression. Oh my God. <laughs> You're welcome. That's just, that's it's crazy because, yeah. But it's interesting because, like, it replicates natural light, but then the fact that it's only a 60 minute limit, like, what is in it that you could only use it for 60 minutes? It's kind of scary. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of scared too. Well, maybe it's just like if you use it for more than 60 minutes, like the effect doesn't. Oh, stay true. Well. So you get like not first, like desensitized. Yeah, like the first thing I thought of was like, you know, like how like REM sleep works. Like if you're sleeping for this amount of time, you'll enter like REM sleep or something like, like that's the first thing I thought of. So maybe it's just like there was a time limit on it. I don't oh, know. That, that makes sense. sense. Science yeah. is beyond me. So that makes not. me that makes me wonder too, because they said you said that the uh, vitamin D is a big reason that causes it because you're inside more in the winter. There's not as much sun. But now, I mean, this is something that I don't think we know the answer to yet because we're still living it. But with quarantine and everything, everybody was inside, and I mean, it was the springtime. But a lot of times we were all yes. stuck inside. Like there was a lot a lack of vitamin D during the past few months. So I wonder if that kind of wrecked replicates it in a way except it's not winter it's just yes and that that perfectly segues like with quarantine and seasonal depression coming up I think like many of us are going to be affected by just like a decrease in our moods so what are some ways that you guys combat the winter blues and like cabin fever I think knowing a few people with seasonal depression something that helps them is like someone who doesn't really feel that as much is like checking in with them more like knowing that they have it um is really helpful because then you can like you can check in with them and make sure they're doing okay because it is a very real thing and you know like the whole thing with like depression is that they don't it's harder to reach out to people so if you reach out to them instead as like the outsider person who doesn't has it it makes their lives like a lot easier 
and they will appreciate it more than you would ever know. So that is not a way that you can kick it if you do have it, but maybe if you do have it, you can let someone close know in your life and I don't know, let them know that them checking in means like the world to you and then maybe they'll do that. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Leslie. Yeah, definitely, definitely couldn't have said it better myself. It's, it's very important to just reach out to the people in your life, especially if they're going through something like that, because they're, their mindset's completely different than yours during that time. But yeah. if you're somebody who's just, if you don't necessarily have depression and you're just kind of sad about being inside, I rec I would recommend just like, I don't know, for me, movies. Like, I just like to sit down and watch old movies that I've already seen just because oh, you know what's going to happen. And, and then you like have snacks and candy and I don't know, hot comforting. chocolate. Yeah, like comforting things. Comfort food is a must. Yeah, but that's well, different. <laughs> What I will leave, with, leave you guys with is to make sure that you stay active during the winter, just to like take your mind off things and stay connected with others, like you said. Yes, oh, FaceTime. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, guys. <laughs> she said she's a little heart. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> because that, I because I don't, that was just, I don't know, because that's where, you know, I like how she... Uh, brought awareness to something that's very important and yeah it is talked about but I think mental health as a whole is not talked about enough that's why I love self-care Sunday because I don't know just introduces topics that people don't think about as much especially if people who don't experience those things so something yeah. to think about but I, I, I love how I learned something new every time we do this show because I didn't know summer seasonal depression was a thing. I thought I, I was just weird. So like now I know I'm not weird. I'm being the only person bummed out in summer because when I tell people I don't like summer, they think I'm crazy. No, I don't think that's crazy to not like summer. Summer's like, I like spring because I feel like summer is too hot. Like I like summer spring and fall because it's like the in-between of winter and summer. So it's like, you know, I could go on a whole rant about how much I don't like summer. <laughs> I'm yeah. starting to like it a little more now, but like, still, it falls uh, flat. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> if you want to learn more things, we've got health and wellness with Issa. Issa, where you at, girl? <laughs> Here I am, guys. Welcome, welcome. I hope everyone so far had a nice, happy, and adventurous Halloween season. I know it's very exciting, and of course, I know what is very popular around now is the candy. All the crazy things that are coming out, whether it's like new flavors to like, I don't know, king-sized bars and everything. It's something exciting. Uh, but also, I mean, for me, it's a little scary. I don't know how far will they go, but they could go far. They have proven so far. <laughs> but um, anyway, today what I would like to discuss is um, healthy alternatives, especially now after everyone gathered what they have went out for for Halloween. Um, I uh, wanted to discuss uh, some healthy alternatives and healthy ways to like still enjoy some sweet treats uh, without having the excess sugar rush or eating the excess, I would say, processed things in your diet. Uh, first, what I want to ask, speaking of um, healthy, the word healthy is uh, very, very vague in my opinion. And what I want to ask you guys is what, when you hear like a um, healthier alternative or um, healthy substitute, what do you guys think of first? Or what, what would you consider healthy? Healthy. <laughs> this is bad I, when I hear the word healthy I just think it's gross automatically it's so bad to say like I know that's not true I know it's not true but that's just like my first thought like I'm just like oh healthy we're making it healthy and like my mom does that when she cooks and then she I don't know what did a few months ago she was like oh we're gonna make empanadas and I was like oh yeah and she's like we're gonna bake them and I was like why why are we baking them and she's like it's better and I was like no just do it the way with like you know fry it in the pan like anyway <laughs> <laughs> my first thought was vegetables I once um looked up a recipe for like healthy brownies and to like you could like make them with like avocado instead of I don't know some other ingredient and it was just like so weird and like I was like wow this looks like really cool to make brownies with like avocado and then I read all the comments for the recipe and it was like oh it tastes like trash so 
See, I exactly. It just has like a I negative connotation. Yeah, yeah, often so, because a lot of people think that making something healthy means often making it bland or just like, I don't know, forcing vegetables into it, like shoving a whole zucchini or like <laughs> three cups of spinach into the recipe. Like I've seen those people like who just try too hard with it. But in fact, uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, usually uh, for me, when I look at something being healthier or when something is considered a healthy alternative, it's usually um, very, very simple and it's not as bad as you guys think. Uh, number one, it usually is less sugar. Now, nowadays, it, there's so many things that are just like filled like with 20, 30 grams of just pure either sugar or sweeteners, which um, just numb your taste buds. Like you don't actually taste like, let's say the chocolate or you don't actually taste. I often see it like in, um, in uh, dinner products, even more than like sweets, like they have so, so much sugar. Um, and it's just surprising because it usually, like when I look at a sauce or um, let's say a spiced dish or something, even a lot of, especially in frozen foods, if you turn around, like one of the main ingredients on there, like uh, on their list is sugar to keep the preservation up, to let it sit on the shelf for a long time or like in the freezer. So number one, healthier alternative is definitely less sugar. Number two, less process. Now the less ingredients there are on something, whether it's um, a candy bar or whether it's like a snack, uh, the less ingredients, the better. You want to be familiar with the ingredients. Like if there's something that you've never heard of, let's say like if it's something like, um, uh, like a, a, a preservative or something that just looks crazy and freaky, just like try to be aware of what it is. Um, but if you really don't know like that half the ingredients on the list, I don't recommend eating it. That's probably a bunch of like preservation things and a bunch of um, compounds, like chemical compounds to just keep it sitting on the shelf longer. Uh, so avoid those. Less processed, less ingredients, usually the better. And last but not least, if something is nutritious, like if some opt for something that has more, let's say um, that has actual fruit pieces or has actual fruit juice instead of just, um, uh, like artificial sweeteners or uh, flavors, because that often just like means you're eating something real as opposed to something fake. Could make you feel better, and it's just more aligned with your digestion, and your stomach will actually treat it as an actual food as opposed to just something that tastes good, but like it doesn't know what to do with it. So that's a lot of information right there. I hope you guys. No, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Just I remember something my health teacher used to tell us in high school, and it was always like, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. So I always look at ingredients and that, that's kind of just like how I'll tell. I mean, sometimes I buy it anyway, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that yeah. phrase too from health teachers. And yeah, yeah I, I, I try to avoid processed stuff, but I feel like sometimes it's kind of inedible if you just need to like buy granola bars so you can quickly like, I don't know, like eat something while you're out. But like overall, avoiding it isn't too bad, I'd say. I, I've definitely gotten better over the years, I would say. In general, I would recommend eating as whole as possible. Like um, if it's sometimes a granola bar or sometimes you eat something that um, like, oh, you like quickly pick up something from Chipotle or somewhere like where it's made for you, it's fine. Like it, it happens, it happens to all of us. But eventually like, uh, don't try to do it every day. That's pretty much it. <laughs> but uh, moving on to healthy Halloween candy and uh, Halloween candy in general, I want to ask, uh, what are you guys' favorites? Like, what do you guys go for? Because uh, based on that, I could tailor some uh, suggestions to you. I feel like I'm so torn about like what my absolute favorite is. But like, I would say like maybe for like chocolate, I really like Twix and maybe for like <laughs> sweet stuff or I guess I should say sour, I really like um, Sour Patch Kids. Ooh, that's a good one. I, okay, I actually think about this a lot because um, this is such a good question. I love to ask people, but for candy, I, see, I don't even have a direct answer. I, my two favorites for candy are Twizzlers, which I always get judged for. People hate Twizzlers and I don't understand why. Twizzlers are amazing and they're the best movie snack and nobody can change my mind. And then my second favorite candy are like, sour gummy worms like anything I like sour candy what? and for chocolate what 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 Twizzlers and then sour gummy worms what is wrong with that I feel the I literally had those yesterday I don't I don't hate them 
but they are not my favorite you know you see this this is part of the judgment no they're my favorite sorry um i just okay and then after anyway. that for chocolate i like peanut m&ms but i also really like crunch bars so okay well are, oh, okay. Crunch bars are not good either why don't you like i literally have a package of crunch bars behind me like mini <laughs> ones no <laughs> This is ridiculous. You're like that kid that I would would have loved to have as my friend because we would have gone together on Halloween and like I would give you everything I hate, which is everything you love. And we would have the- <laughs> great, great I also, I like Reese's peanut butter cups. I just wanna throw that out there. And they're really good oh. if you put them in the freezer, put them in the freezer. You just leveled up, congrats. I mean, I always liked Reese's peanut butter cups because I love peanut butter. I love nuts in general. And I also really liked uh, Kit Kats because they just like tasted crunchy, good. And they're actually, I heard they're the number one most popular Halloween candy too. Kit Kats are amazing. They Kit are Kats really good. over crunch bars every day, any day. <laughs> they're basically the same thing, but one is obviously better and it's Kit Kats. So um, based on what you guys said, I hear there's like a lot of taste preferences, definitely a lot like um, sour, sweet, fruity. Um, and based on that, what I would recommend, even though I know people don't like it, but even to give it a try, there is a lot of different dried fruit that you could try that tastes pretty good. And I, I remember when I would go to Poland, uh, sometimes instead of having like candy, they would just have a bunch of dried fruit, whether it's uh, dried berries, dried apples, cherries, uh, papayas, mangoes sometimes. Um, and we would eat them uh, as, as like a snack, as like a candy. And sometimes they were so good. Like they were so much better than like, um, like they, they would taste better than like sour candies and whatnot. So I would recommend trying that just once in a while. You could get them almost at any store. Papaya is pretty good and uh, mango is pretty good too. But I would recommend also like dried apple pieces because those are pretty nice. They're like really sweet. Um, for chocolate, I recommend opting for dark chocolate as opposed to milk chocolate. The more cacao is in there, the better, the healthier, of course, more magnesium. Uh, if you don't like dark chocolate, I recommend maybe adding something to it like nuts like uh, pecans hazelnuts walnuts sometimes they have some pieces of fruit in there or they have like some uh nice fruit extracts in, the, in there that taste really good oh another thing i completely recommend doing especially during this time uh this is of course apple picking season apple harvesting season uh you could cook down some apples into applesauce and like if you add some spices to it some sugar or some honey tastes so good it's like such a good snack and you could put it on anything you could like um uh have it with like uh, some chips or have it with something and it's a really good healthy snack and we do it every year in our house and it smells and tastes amazing. I completely recommend, it's a cute little snack. Um, last but not least, what I really recommend, especially like um, when you really wanna try something that's similar to Twix, that's similar to Kit Kat or like a candy that you just really like, completely go for trying to make a homemade alternative. It doesn't even have to be healthy. Just the fact that it has less ingredients in it just makes it so much, I would say, it makes it better for your body. And it kind of is also something fun. Like it's a cool little trick instead of, and then if you have a recipe that you really like and you perfect, it's like, it saves you so much more money rather than buying one in the store that's probably processed. And uh, it's pretty cool too. It's like a little accomplishment. It's like, I mean, at my house, I learned to make Reese's cups and they tasted really good. So, and like, I didn't have to even add sugar to it because instead I added like honey. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, these are some of my tips I recommend. I recommend you guys to try them out. And if you guys do try them out, please let me know which one. Uh, awesome. So yeah, that, that's my spiel. Thank <laughs> that you. That was so awesome. Much. Fun fact, I did try making Reese's Cups myself once. They didn't come out bad, but they didn't come out good. So maybe I'll try again sometime. There's <laughs> try again tonight. <laughs> oh my god, no, I'm already baking like three things tonight. <laughs> I'm not even yeah. kidding. I have like three different recipes planned. It's really? gonna be- Are they all Halloween themed? Well, I mean post-Halloween, but you know. Um, maybe. yeah. For, uh, some of them are some you could still eat halloween treats after halloween yeah i mean i don't see why not if you're still in the halloween spirit um but i am making cake pops for my grandma's birthday party oh Um, that's cute i don't even know if she knows what cake pops are (laughs) Um, but like i'm gonna make pops. but uh thank you isa that was awesome i love hearing all your tips always Mm-hmm. of course yeah guys stay healthy stay awesome and just have a great time and tell your grandmother i said happy birthday uh-huh. sure <laughs>
I'll be like, my friend Issa gave me a healthy alternative for cake pops. Here you go, grandma. That's so awesome. I um, I love all the healthy alternatives though, because I just want to try them. I should eat healthier. So like, this is a great, this is a push for me to eat healthier. Out of this entire list, what is like one thing that Issa recommended that you would try to like eat if you were like, when it's safe, when you, if you went to like the cinema or something, like what's a snack that you would make and bring? Or even just watch a movie at home by yourself. Like a movie snack? Yeah, like out of That's the- That's hard because like, yeah. I feel like movie snacks need to be sugary. And I understand that that was not the point of everything that just happened, but I definitely would try to make your own like Reese's peanut butter cups. Cause oh no, it would be no matter, even if it's still sugar, it would still be healthier than buying like a packaged item. So like, I definitely would try that. But you said that they didn't come out good, so now I'm nervous. Well, I tried them, like, four years ago, and I'm pretty sure I had, like, seven wrong ingredients, so it should be fine for you. Seven wrong ingredients. I definitely yeah. had something wrong because the texture was just so off. I have no idea what I did wrong. It did, It tasted like a Reese's peanut butter cup, but, like, like, the texture of the chocolate was too hard, and the peanut butter part was, like, too soft. Oh. It was, and it was very messy to eat. Like, it got everywhere all over your hands, like... I don't know what 14 year old me was doing. My family tasted them, they did not like them. I could just tell. Oh, that's the best when you make something and give it to your family, you just know they don't like it and you're just like, uh, so funny. I made them as like an experiment because I was really into baking. Like I just started that and then I heard them like in another room being like, those are not good. And I was just like, they could have told me to my face. <laughs> yeah, my feelings wouldn't be hurt. <laughs> no, no, because like I knew that they weren't good. <laughs> yeah. But out of everything on this list, I I know she mentioned like nuts and I'm not a huge fan of nuts, but like like chocolate covered nuts, maybe like dark chocolate. I was going to say dark salt. chocolate. Dark chocolate that makes it better. Really like dark chocolate, maybe some sea salt or something. And, you know, chocolate covered nuts, like that actually sounds like a really good movie snack. Or I liked how she mentioned dried fruit. I've had um like dry like banana chips before and those were really good yeah that's dried fruit something I definitely should get into and try just because I never really did before and I know for nuts like people always say to eat that because it keeps you full so then like you're not constantly yeah. snacking so I feel if, like I should try that just so you know if you're ever like starving and you like don't have time to like eat a meal I mean like I don't encourage like skipping meals obviously but like if you're just like like you just need something like walnuts a couple of walnuts will fill you right up it is so weird it's like magic in your stomach that's interesting i tried it before i hate walnuts but like they do the job probably a good thing like i know like they do the job. Will... <laughs> they'll do the job my family will put uh walnuts in salad i find salads to be like so disappointing when i eat them for a meal because i never filled up but, but i've seen my sister put um, walnuts in her salad and like that can, I don't know, help with like hunger and it's like a salad. So it's like healthy. Yeah, definitely. Um, See, we always get good tips on every segment. Everybody always has awesome advice. I love it. I walk away from these episodes learning more than I knew going in. And I hope you guys do too as our listeners. But anyways, that's all we've got for the weekend. Wake up this Sunday. Hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. And if you aren't hungry now, um, then I don't know what it'll take for you. Maybe go eat a nice, healthy meal that Issa suggested. Definitely. And, um, <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.